So the parts have finally arrived right back here out of the mailbox. Well, we didn't come out of the mailbox, obviously. The parts have arrived. So now, we can finally finish. Hold up. Okay, hold on. And there we go. Right there, now I can finally finish the Ferrari F50 GT. Here we go, here we go. And there it is. And I just realized I forgot to mention that the reason I'm so excited for these parts of rides is because the seller actually forgot to send the order and then I had to wait another week and now it is finally finished. So let's take a slightly better look at the finally finished F50 GT. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Cole, and in today's video, we are looking at my LEGO Ferrari F50 GT mock. Now, if you are interested in building this model, the instructions are available for it at my website and Rebrickable at the link in the description below. So first, let's talk a little bit about what the Ferrari F50, F50 GT is, because a lot of you guys will probably know what the Ferrari F50 is, which was basically Ferrari's top of the line road car in the 1990s. It was a mid-engine V12. The V12 was derived from a Formula One engine at the time. It sounded really good. It's one of my very favorite cars. And that basically how we, how Ferrari ended up making the GT version is that back in the 1990s, you also had the GT1 race series, which is like a race series with different cars in it, I guess. And basically you had some very famous cars like the McLaren F1 GTR, the Porsche 911 GT1, the Mercedes CLK GTR, and cars like that. And so Ferrari said, okay, let's enter a car ourselves. We'll enter the F50. We'll turn it into a race car and put it into the series. And then some real changes came along or something like that. And basically the people who were running GT1 allowed some teams to do some things and some not to do some things. I can't remember exactly what it was. Basically Ferrari said, okay, at this point, we don't want, do not want to go into GT1 after these rule changes or whatever. And so they canceled the project. Now they had built three of the Ferrari F50 GTs. They were basically, I, I've heard that they're like F1 cars with an F50 GT body on it, which I think is mostly true. So because Ferrari was not going to enter into the GT1 series, they destroyed all of the chassis they had built except for three, which were sold to uh, prestigious Ferrari collectors who I assume had bought a lot of Ferraris in the past. And I think one lives here in California, one lives in Australia or the Middle East or something like that, and one lives in Japan. And you see them come out at car shows, like really important car shows, and they come out and then they go back home never to be seen again for like 10 years or something. But if you'd like to know a little bit more about the F50 GT, my brother Nicholas made a really good video about it on his YouTube channel, I'll link to that down below. And if you'd like to know more about GT1 racing in general, there's a very good Instagram page known as GT1 History, he posts some very good, like very cool GT1 stuff. Um, so I'll link to that down below as well. And also, I should probably point out that GT1 is not a thing anymore. You probably figured that out by now, but yeah, they canceled it, I think, sometime in the early 2000s. So now that we have co covered what the F50 GT actually is, we can look at some of the techniques that I've used on the actual model here. Now, the front is a pretty, like, interesting design because it's not super complicated, but I think it looks really good. There's some complex looking designs around the front that aren't actually all that complex to put together. Basically, there's just a lot of snot techniques going on here. Um, for the intakes and stuff around the bottom we even have some upside down parts here to form the front splitter 
Uh, I think they all came out really, really nicely. And then on top of that, we have the intakes, which look really mean. Obviously, they're a lot bigger than the ones on the standard road car. And then we have the headlights. And I originally thought these parts would not work as the headlights when I was designing it, because I thought they'll be too narrow. They actually look really nice uh, when I actually finally put the whole thing together. And then, as you can see, we're using the city style fenders here. And we have some brackets around the sides, which kind of close the fender in to make it very, like, very close around the wheel. And that's because the actual Ferrari F50 GT had much more like streamlined body work than the road going F50. And so we're kind of trying to replicate that here with these brackets to kind of keep everything really like tight around the wheel. And then as you can see here, we have the door. This is using the ball joint door hinge technique that I came up with for the Koenigsegg Yesco. And basically this just allows the door to be hinged at this angle here, which it looks really good. And then we have the black stripe going up the side, which is formed with some brackets. It goes, as you can see, all the way from the front to the back. And I think that came out really nicely. Then we have this side skirt, which is very interesting because it sits lower than the body main like chassis of the car, but it sits above where the wheels touch, so it just doesn't drag along the ground. It's uh, mounted using a headlight brick and another snot brick, and it allows for like a half stud gap here. So it can sit super low, just like the real race car, and it can still look really good. And I also have these brackets on the ends, which are pretty new pieces, um, but they look really good here. Uh, they, as I said, they kind of fill in the area around the wheel well. Then on the interior, we have little standard Lego interior stuff. I'm horrible at fitting minifigures into cars right now. I gotta work, I'm kind of just going for like looks over functions, I guess at this point with some of my models. I might change that in the future, but this one doesn't fit minifigures. Although it has a full interior. As you can see, this one has a gray shift knob, but um, in the final instructions, it's actually black. I just didn't have any black microphone pieces to form a shift knob, but we have the full interior with the steering wheel and all the standard stuff you'd expect to see in a car interior. Then moving up onto the roof, as you can see, we have the big old roof scoop, which came out really nicely just using a curved slope. And then we have the engine cover, and this engine cover is actually pretty simple, but it looks it looks really aggressive because this car is literally only black and red, and this is a really mean look. Um, the engine cover is entirely red with red grills, just like the real thing, and I think that looks really mean. Under that, we have some engine details. These aren't the greatest engine details. It's the first time I've tried putting engine details in a car, um, so I think they look pretty good. I probably could improve them a bit in like a version two sometime. Um, but yeah, that's where they are for now. Uh, also, you can see we're using large Speed Champions wheels and the new ones, they look very good, especially on a race car when you wouldn't exactly have that much sidewall on your tires. Then we have a really, really big wing uh, that's all red again and with a black support. So it just gives it a really crazy color contrast on this model, but I think it looks really good. And then around the back, we have some slightly complicated techniques to get this uh, like lowered part that the wing sits on and the more brackets and stuff just around the side to kind of fill in the black stripe and then the fender kind of well, wheel well, what do we call that part? Yeah, something like that. And then around the back, we have the binoculars for the exhausts and the diffuser at the bottom, which is just formed with some plates down there. And obviously we have the tail lights. I'm also planning on designing a road going version of this model, obviously like the standard road going Ferrari F50. And that will be out in probably a month or two, something like that. I got a bunch of other models coming up here pretty soon. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be delayed for a bit. I also have a couple more Ferraris that I have designed, but I just have to find the parts to build them. So that's kind of being worked on in the background. We have another one coming up really soon. So now we're doing kind of like a bunch of Ferraris. I guess that's it for today's video. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.